In the near future, wildfires and droughts begin spreading all around the globe. Soon scientists announce an incoming disaster known as the solar crisis, which predicts that at the rate the sun is currently expanding, in 100 years it'll engulf Earth and in 300 the solar system won't exist anymore. The United Earth Government or UAG decide to proceed with the Moving Mountain Project, which consists on building huge engines that will push the Earth out of the solar system. Because of the high cost of the operation that is eating resources at a rapid pace, riots and protests ensue all over the world by people who don't care about tragedies that aren't happening yet. The violent protests get worse when the UAG bans the Digital Life Project or DLP, a radical group that believes humanity's future is in computers. They're developing a program that would allow a person to upload their minds in a disk, but they lack the resources to go further, so they're constantly hacking and throwing terrorist attacks at the UAG. After yet another failed attempt from the DLP, the UAG notices the people are losing faith in their project and consider stopping it. However Chinese Ambassador Zhou convinces everyone to carry on with the first part of the project, which will be done soon and will help with morale. The first plan is testing the engine on the moon, since they're planning to push it as well so that Earth can break away from its gravity. Many people are being trained as astronauts for this task, and one of them is Lu, a pilot that arrives at the base to find it surrounded by protesters. The guards try to keep the angry people at bay, but one of the protesters manages to sneak inside. Luckily trainee Han quickly knocks down the guy, which impresses Lu so much that he can already picture having a future with her. While the guards use force to get rid of the protesters, the new trainees are given a tour of the place and sent to the space elevator for their first test. This elevator is the highest structure in human history, and it gives the cadets a taste of what's like to be in space. It goes up so fast that many of them pass out and don't get to see the station that is being built up there for the project. From then on, all the cadets are kept busy training in all matters of subjects like hand-to-hand -hand combat, use of firearms, and constant trips on the elevator until they don't pass out anymore. They're also put through medical tests and exercise to make sure they're on peak physical condition. While training together, Lu and Han get to know each other and they fall in love. One day, Lu bribes the guards with cigarettes so they allow him to get a bouquet inside the base and he gifts it to Han the next time they go on the elevator. That morning, a new batch of reserve astronauts arrive and also join the elevator trip. Suddenly, all the drones outside begin flying out of the hangar, and the engineers discover the system has been hacked. The elevator begins going up before schedule, and the new astronauts change clothes, revealing they're wearing uniforms with the cadets' names, which is noticed by Lu and Han. Outside, the drones open fire, and everyone in the base must concentrate on defending the base by shooting their own tech. The pilots try to use the planes to shoot, but the system won't aim at the drones because they're detected as allies. The drones take advantage of this and bring down one of the elevators with missiles. In the elevator, the newbies begin locking the doors and the chairs before stealing IDs from the cadets, beating up anyone that dares resist. In the other room, Lou leaves his chair and uses his glasses to make the sun burn the lock screen, causing the door to open. After checking on a bleeding friend, Lou goes after the terrorists, fighting them until one of them falls off the edge and dies. Lou goes after the other guy with a fire extinguisher, but it's too late, thanks to the stolen ID, the terrorist gives the elevator access to the station at the same time that the drones attach a missile on them. Meanwhile the scientists in the base bring over the 550C, an intelligent quantum computer that finally overrides the hacking. The drones begin crashing to the ground and causing explosions all over the place while the elevators are dragged back down, shaking everyone around because of zero-g. Lu is still fighting the terrorist, so Han grabs a mechanical arm to break a window and help Lu knock out the guy, right then she happily asks for her flowers again. Unfortunately the man managed to press the detonator before passing out, and now the station is crashing down on the base, causing irreparable damage to the building and many of the cadets, although Lu jumps on top of Han to shield her from it. The base is evacuated and the newscasts announce around 3,000 lives were lost that day. During the following weeks, the riots and terrorist attacks get worse because of all the death and resource loss the crash of the station caused, and people begin demanding the government to bring the DLP back. Joe makes his assistant read the speech he's prepared asking the UAG to have faith in the project while he has a chat with the American ambassador to convince him to give them a chance. A few weeks later, cryosleeping pods are sent to the moon with the crew that will keep on working on the lunar engines. As soon as he wakes up, computer engineer Heng Yu goes to check on his things to make sure they're fine. This includes the AI 550A and a recording of his daughter Yaya that interacts with him in a very limited way because of 550A's limitations. It turns out Heng Yu used to work for the DLP and now he's accepted to work on the lunar project to gain access to 550C, which will control the entire base, because he thinks he can use it to make the Yaya's clip, which only lasts a few seconds, develop into a full AI of his dead daughter's mind. While working with the rest of the team, Heng Yu learns that computer researcher Zhao is in charge of 550C and wants him to work with him on the operation of the system. Heng Yu and Zhao do the first testing of 550C by making it activate each sector of the base. While they wait for the computer to do its thing, Zhao gives Heng Yu the digital copy of his mind that the company confiscated when they banned DLP and explains it's up to him if he wants to destroy it or not. Sometime later, Heng Yu shows Yaya's clip to Zhao while he remembers the day of the tragedy. 
He had been driving with his wife and daughter, but in a moment of distraction, Heng Yu didn't see a truck coming and the car got in a crash. His wife died instantly, but Yaya still had a few minutes left, so Heng Yu took her to the DLP to back up her mind. The organization didn't want to help because the technology wasn't ready yet, but Zhao, who used to work there too, accepted to do the favor. Back in the present, Heng Yu asks Zhao to use 550C on Yaya, but Zhao is against the idea and reminds Heng Yu that giving him 550A had already been enough. Sometime later, the system detects an incoming level Z9 solar storm. All the workers have to rush back to the base but they're worried their vehicles won't be fast enough. The drivers push the engines to the extreme and manage to enter the base right before the solar storm hits, but unfortunately 550C gets fried in the process. The AI is needed to launch the project in three days, so Heng Yu offers 550A to replace it in exchange of being put in the team that will develop the future 550 models. Zhao accepts, and Heng Yu moves Yaya's mind to a disk before handing the AI. Three days later, the team tests the engines and after some seconds of tension, they're delighted to see the moon goes through an angular displacement, small but real. This proves that in 20 years they'll be able to be pushed away completely, and this success gives people all over Earth faith back on the project. A few months later, they test the engines again, this time on Earth. At first all the screens go black and people think it's failed, but suddenly they feel the ground shaking and a bright beam can be seen coming from the astronaut base. Scientists at the UAG confirm that Earth made an angular displacement, and people all over the world celebrate that soon they'll be able to move Earth completely. Many years pass as the UAG continues to work on finishing more powerful engines that will do the full push and the Moving Mountain project gets renamed as the Wandering Earth. Most of the building is being done by the fixed 550C, who is also developing at an outstanding pace. Every year there's a new test that keeps proving their theories right, and civilians become more accepting of the project, to the point where the DLP disappears completely. However there's also talk about how not everyone will be allowed into the underground cities that are being built right now, and the requirements to get a pass are quite discriminatory. As Earth's rotation slows down more and more every year, society changes to a 60-hour system and global internet is shut down. All kinds of weather disasters soon hit the planet, like floods and solar radiation that cause a raise in cancer cases. Lu and Han get married, and eventually they have a baby boy that will become the protagonist of the first movie. They're quite worried because it'll be hard to get a pass for the underground cities for their son too, and to make matters worse, Han also gets cancer from the solar radiation. Heng Yu never stops working on Yaya's while helping with the development of the new 550, which is named 550 Watts. Fourteen years pass since the fall of the station and Lu, now with the rank of Major, goes to an interview to be one of the navigators that will be sent to the new one. The interviewer is 550 Watts, who admits Lu's skills are impressive but it also knows about his family troubles and thinks it's more reasonable for Lu to stay on Earth and take care of them. Lu admits he's sorry to leave his family behind, but getting chosen for the base is the only way to get his son sent to the underground city through preferential policy. On the other side of the mirror, the scientists in charge of the project are also hearing all the interviews, and Heng Yu can't help thinking about his own daughter while hearing Lu talk so passionately about his son. Then 550 Watts points out that Han's life will end soon, causing Lu to have a breakdown and make him fail the stress test. Afterward, Lu goes to the hospital to spend time with Han, because her condition has worsened to the point she can't be at home anymore. Han admits she'd like to see her hometown one last time, which may be difficult because of the current weather problems. Later in the evening, inspired by Lu's passion, Heng Yu sneaks into the base and connects Yaya's mind to 550 watts. This time Yaya has unlimited reactions to him and she can tell she's somewhere else, which makes Heng Yu cry. At that moment, a group of guards arrive with Zhao, who tries to make Heng Yu see reason and accept Yaya's dead. Heng Yu refuses and completely uploads Yaya into 550 watts, which immediately triggers problems in the moon system and the engines begin failing. The guards tase Heng Yu and take him away while Zhao puts Yaya back on a disc and shuts down this extension of 550 watts. Meanwhile Lu pulls some strings through old friends and borrows a jet to take his family to Han's hometown. After doing some pirouettes for fun, they land on Shanghai, which is now a frozen wasteland. While they watch the stars, Han asks Lu that when the time comes, she wants to die with dignity and not with a bunch of wires and pipes connected to her. At the UAG, they discuss the system problem Heng Yu caused and notice it's very similar to the hacking they did to the drones in the elevator years ago. They're trying to override the system with 550 watts, but somehow they keep getting blocked. Suddenly the moon's engines cross the limits of their power and explode, causing the moon to lose a good chunk of its land. This explosion also begins pushing the moon towards Earth. Joe is near the ocean when it happens and sends an emergency alert to all world leaders as he watches a tsunami grow in size and hit the land. Because of this emergency state, Lu gets a message calling him back to duty, and the leaders already begin opening the underground cities to let people in since the tides will only get worse from now on. Before Lu leaves for his mission, Han dies peacefully in her sleep, and their son is taken to the underground city by Han's father. Meanwhile Joe talks at the UAG asking for their support for his emergency plan, he wants to use all of Earth's nuclear weapons on the moon to trigger its implosion and avoid the collision. 
No government has ever revealed how many nuclear weapons they have in their arsenal because it's confidential, but for the first time in history it doesn't matter and everyone agrees to hand in what they have in order to help. In the meantime, Zhao visits Heng Yu in prison to tell him they'll be activating Earth's engines sooner than expected, so they need to reactivate the global internet to allow coordinated detonation control. One of the servers is now underwater, and Zhao wants Heng Yu to take care of it. To convince him, he shows him he still has the disc with Yaya's and Heng Yu's minds. Because lunar debris has formed an asteroid belt around the moon, the best pilots are chosen to take transport the nukes, including Lu. On Earth, three teams are sent to take care of the missing internet servers, which are on Beijing, Tokyo, and Dulles. Zhao explains to everyone how to use the key that will decode the password, which contains 30,000 random numbers, then 550 watts will do the rest. Meanwhile the shuttles with the chosen pilots leave for the moon. The asteroids move fast and come out of nowhere, so they do end up hitting a few of the shuttles and make them crash. This causes the team to lose 200 warheads, only leaving 180 for the detonation. The shuttles are guided by 550 watts through the surface of the moon safely, at least until another asteroid hits one more shuttle and causes it to crash others including lose, forcing them to land rather violently. In the end, they lose 384 warheads. The survivors immediately search for tape to fix their helmets to keep up oxygen and bandage any wounds, then they decide they'll deliver the remaining warheads on foot. Lu doesn't want young people to die so soon, so he leaves the shuttle and closes the door, accepting to sacrifice himself for their sake before sending the shuttle with all the survivors back. On Earth, the three teams arrive at the locations of the servers and dive underwater, finding all kinds of marine life already making their lives there. With the help of the drones and special tools, Heng Yu's team in Beijing enters the building and finds the door to the server, but when they try to force the door open, the tool can't deal with the pressure and malfunctions, heavily wounding one of the men. Zhao tries to take care of the wounds, but he doesn't have the necessary tools and the man dies. While most of the team takes away the body, Heng Yu and Zhao decide to go ahead and finish the mission, making all the necessary connections to bring the internet back. While Lu takes a truck to move the remaining warheads, suddenly lunar debris begins falling on Earth, which gets in the way for a backup team to reach the Beijing server. The building starts shaking when the debris hits it, and some hardware falls on Zhao's leg, getting him stuck. The room begins filling with water, and Heng Yu can't get the door open even with the help of his drone, so Zhao decides to pass him the password key before the water takes over him and he dies. The lunar debris begins destroying all the major locations on Earth, and the people that had been moving to the underground cities peacefully now being to push in panic. At the UAG, Joe gets bad news, they don't have enough time to coordinate all the warheads to make them explode at the same time because they're all different models. Joe is about to lose hope, but one of his men offer one alternate solution, they could send more astronauts and detonate them manually, meaning they would be accepting to be a sacrifice. 300 people are needed for the operation, and a few youngsters volunteer, but this action is interrupted by an older pilot that points out it's their duty to do this and leave the young people to take care of the future. All astronauts that are over 50 agree and immediately get on the shuttles to fly to the moon. Lu is shocked to see them arrive but his communicator is broken, so he can't say his old teacher and training partners goodbye before he's put on a shuttle to return to Earth. The UAG confirms the Tokyo and the Dulles servers are back online, but not Beijing. Heng Yu is having trouble because the water is filling his room as well, and he can't connect the key to the right computer. Desperate for a solution, he connects the mine disk to the computer at the same time the astronauts on the moon detonate all the nukes. The moon successfully implodes and the collision is avoided, however more debris is coming and Earth needs to leave soon. Heng Yu activates Yaya's clip and tries to ask her to activate the internet from the inside by showing her the key, but at that moment the water finally covers him and he dies as well. Lunar debris continues to fall all over the world, and the UAG sends an emergency message saying the mission has failed, thus riots and panic begin taking over major cities. However Zhao thinks not all hope is lost and tells his team to start the countdown to fire the engines. Everyone thinks he's crazy, but in Beijing, Heng Yu's mind suddenly activates inside the computer as well. After reuniting with his daughter, the Heng Yu AI gets down to business and works to activate the server at the same time a man follows Zhao's orders and presses the button. Everyone at the base watches with awe as the Earth is pushed away out of the lunar debris way and people around the world celebrate while the tides finally calm down. Lu watches the Earth move from his spot in the shuttle and takes the chance to record a beautiful video to send to his son. Meanwhile Heng Yu's and Yaya's mind backups become one with 550 watts. Seven years later, as Earth wanders away, it regains its 24-hour system. Joe has retired, but his assistant carries on his legacy at the UA. Now the lunar crisis is over, they start the second part of the plan, which will be to fly near Jupiter in 10 years to get the second boost that will push Earth out of the solar system for good. A space station has been put in place to keep an eye on the engines, and Lu is in charge of it. The system is managed by 550 watts, but the AI decides it isn't easy to say and turns the word around to form Moss. Inside the AI, Heng Yu discovers it was the Moss who destroyed the lunar engines and caused most terrorist attacks, like the elevator and drone takeover. After watching Yaya in a loop, 
Moss has reached the conclusion that the best way to preserve human civilization is to destroy mankind, confirming this is the same Moss from the first movie that caused all the trouble under this philosophy. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.